So my forebears uh, were French lace makers who went to England and then um, with, with the Industrial Revolution ended up here in Australia. And maybe that's where some of that comes from. It's just an, a natural sort of thing in my genetics. I don't know. But I've always loved textures of things and found some sort of meaning in textures that from the texture of the, the barks to, you know, the grasses. Um, it, it could be a visual texture or actual physical texture. Um, I, I find that most appealing. Once I could have a large studio, uh, my work evolved into, I think into more, uh, not necessarily large pieces, but more diversity. It allowed me to work on several things at once. So I could move from, from say, an assemblage to some paperwork and then back again and it all sort of cross-fertilised and, um, you know, became um, something that the work all spoke to each other but was individual as well. Um, whereas when before I, I had that studio, I was more limited. Um, and also being... I always wanted a studio in the bush and it's so wonderful just having this where I can contemplate and look out on the bush and just time just sort of stands still in a way when I'm in here. Uh, I don't have the pressure of um, stuff going on, you know, the whatever news things happening or whatever, I can, I'm, I'm outside of time in a way. I think the thing that I love about Australia generally is that it's it's still quite wild, like there's so many deserts and wild places where nature just does its own thing and doesn't care about mankind. Um, you know, you can, you can get a window into it. You, you can sit in that landscape and, and feel a part of it instead of ruling it like in Europe or somewhere where it might be, everything's so regimented. Here it's all still pretty wild and chaotic and um, doing its own thing. I was brought up on a farm and next to a national park, so I did a lot of just walking around. We had no neighbours, so I just entertained myself walking around through the park, finding little treasures in nature and looking at everything. Um, finding it all quite fascinating and um, exciting, really. I do some sketching, um, but it's more, I think, a physical thing of moving things around. I think, I think that's why assemblage works so well for me. It's that when it hits that sort of sweet spot of everything singing together, uh, it's you know, it's exciting and it's, uh, it tells me that there's something going on there that I should pursue. Um, I have, I think it's a, it's a bit of an argument within myself. There's always these different ideas, like multiple different ideas, and I'm wondering which one I should be doing next. It's sort of like a kid in a lolly shop going, I want to make this one, I want to make that one. And so I keep, I'm often, that's why working with multiple things um, really is good for me because I can, um, it, it, you know, explore different ideas all at the same time. And one, as I was saying before, one thing leading to the other in a different, the different medium, and it's all sort of feeding backwards and forwards and um, yeah, evolving, I suppose, as I go. It's more a matter of what's speaking to me and I work with that and try and uh, help that to become what it wants to become. There's always challenges. I think artists have always had a lot of challenge to be able to pursue 
what they're passionate about. I think with COVID, it's been um, very difficult. And there's been a lot of, pe you know, people can't, can't show, artists can't show their work. Um, and, you know, materials can be difficult to get and just going outside the, of the farm or the studio can be, um, can feel threatening. Uh, it's, yeah, it's an interesting time, interesting times.